In this Muscat travel guide, I'm going to share with you practical information about where to stay, things to do, and we'll especially focus on the delicious food to eat when you visit Muscat, Oman. Muscat is an incredible, spacious, clean, and friendly city with so many things to offer you when you visit. Okay, let's get right into this Muscat travel guide for food lovers. If you fly into Muscat, you'll land at Muscat International Airport, which is a small and kind of sleepy airport located right within the city. The easiest option for getting from Muscat International Airport to the center of Muscat is by taking a private taxi. Right outside the arrivals terminals, there are white taxis with a big blue stripe on the side. They are the official airport taxis and unfortunately they are extremely expensive, but they are one of the best ways to get into the city. From the airport to City Seasons Hotel where I was stayed, which was only a few kilometers away, it cost 9 OMR. There are a couple of different options when it comes to getting a tourist visa, but for the most part, many nationalities can get a visa on arrival at Muscat International Airport by paying a fee. Here's the official Oman tourist visa info, and there's also some good clear information provided about eligible countries and visa options from Oman Air. I stayed in Oman for just three days, so when I landed in Muscat, I went straight to immigration and bought a 10-day single-entry visa for 5 OMR. The line was short and easy, and the immigration staff were friendly. I happened to exchange a little bit of Omani rials before flying in, so I paid exact money for my visa. However, they do accept foreign currencies or credit card. Muscat is a very modern city, and when you visit, you have a choice of some of the modern international hotel chains as well as more local Middle Eastern hotel chains. Here are some areas to consider. Muscat Center, not far from the airport, Muscat City Center is a good area to base yourself, and although it's a spread-out city, there are cafes, restaurants, and attractions in the center. Plus Kiram Beach. You'll find hotels like City Seasons Hotel or Ibis Muscat. Rui in Mutra, another good area to search for hotels in Muscat, is a little further east in the areas of Rui and Mutra, which are some of the main tourist areas of Muscat. Mutra is the political and administrative area of Muscat, and there are many things to do and see in that area. You'll find hotels like Al Falaj Hotel and Mutra Hotel. Beach resorts, one of the draws of Muscat, are the beautiful beaches located right near the city. And there are some high-end resorts like the Al Bustan Palace Ritz-Carlton or Shangri-La Bar Al Jissa Resort on private beach just outside Muscat. When choosing your accommodation in Muscat, it depends on what type of transportation arrangements you have and what type of experience you want to have when you're in Muscat. Omani Food before visiting Oman, I really had no idea what Omani food was. It's a cuisine that can be rather difficult to find outside of Oman. But that makes Omani food truly exciting to taste and discover. There are a few things that I'd like to first point out about Omani food that makes it what is. Trade the Omani Sultanate was historically a very important empire in the Middle East stretching from the Strait of Hormuz to parts of India. And also to Zanzibar, off the coast of Tanzania. Trade and fusion has been a part of the culture of Oman for centuries, and Omani food has been directly influenced by this. You'll find spices from India and East Africa throughout Omani cuisine. There are even some Omani dishes that use coconut milk. See, when I think about Middle Eastern food, meat is typically what I think of, but in Oman, with its long coastline and fertile seas, fish and many types of seafood are a huge part of the local diet. Dried fish in particular, due to the abundance of fish and the abundance of sunshine in Oman, is a common ingredient. Middle Eastern Gulf culture, and then finally, making use of the ingredients from Oman. One of the most distinguishable components to the local cuisine are Omani dried limes, which are present in many different dishes and really provide a source of amazing flavor. Omani dried lemons are considered the best in tea world by the way. Another common ingredient in Omani food is ghee, animal oil. Savour magazine calls Omani food too good to ignore, and I have to agree with them. 
It's an exquisite blend of flavors. Paired with unique Omani and Gulf culture and style. That's just a very brief introduction to Omani food and how it has developed and been influenced. Now let's go over a few of the foods to eat and drink when you're in Oman. Main Omani foods. Shua, considered one of the national Omani foods. Shua is a dish of lamb or goat slow cooked in an underground oven with spices. After a long process of slow cooking, the meat is typically served on a big tray over a bed of rice and eaten communally. Omani shua is especially common to eat during family festivities and celebrations. There are many similar dishes to shua throughout the Middle East like Bedouin Zab. Hariz. This was a totally new dish to me when I tried it in Muscat. It's a porridge made from wheat and ghee. Mixed in with some type of meat, often chicken, and served with a sweet date or raisin sauce to go with it. It's a fantastic dish. Makbus, very similar to kabsa. A popular Arab food originally from Yemen, makbus is a dish of rice, meat, and vegetables, all seasoned with spices, and often served on a communal tray to eat together. It's delicious and hearty and provides a huge meal. I liked eating makbus with yogurt, tomato chutney, and salad on the side. Tharid. An interesting Omani dish I tried is tharid. A dish of bread cooked with sauce to become a very thick sticky porridge-like consistency and mixed with fish. It was extremely heavy, but quite good. Camel curry. I'm not sure what it's called in Oman or in Arabic, but when I was in Muscat, my fried Mustafa took me to a restaurant where we had both camel curry and fried camel with rice. And it was the best meal I had in Oman. Camel tastes similar to beef, but a little more meaty tasting, and it's incredibly delicious. I especially enjoyed the camel hump pieces, which literally melt in your mouth. Mishkak. There's not very much Omani street food, but the main street food that you'll find is mishkak, skewers of marinated grilled meat and seafood. The meat can be marinated in a garlic, ginger, and spices, and then grilled over flaming hot charcoal. Mishkak is eaten with spicy chili sauce or tamarind sauce. Mishkak is one of my favorite Omani foods to eat, especially in the evening. Along on the east coast of Africa, you'll find amazing mishkak, known as mishkaki. Halwa. According to my friend Mustafa, halwa is one of the only authentic Omani desserts. Halwa is a very sweet Omani dessert made from starch and sugar cooked into a thick sticky paste and seasoned with rose water, saffron, and nuts. You'll enjoy it if you love sweets, but it was a bit too sweet for me. Dates. Dates, as in most of the Middle East are a huge part of the food and culture in Oman. And you'll have a non-stop selection of dates to try when you travel to Oman. I liked trying fresh Omani dates right off the palms. Coffee and tea. Another significant part of Omani culture is tea and coffee, and while I won't get into too many details in this Muscat travel guide about the cultural aspects, I will say that both tea and coffee are extremely important. Omani coffee is typically not strong at all, but quite weak and watery, with scents of rosewater and saffron. Coffee is a common social drink and since it's weak you can drink many cups in a row, and also drink it while eating some dates for sweetness. Tea on the other hand is usually very strong, sweet, and creamy, with cardamom or ginger. Again, in this Muscat travel guide I've just given a brief introduction to Omani food. This is just a start and a few of the most memorable things I ate when I visited. There's still so much more Omani food and culture to discover when you visit. Here are a few restaurants I was recommended, but didn't have a chance to try yet. 
Zanzibar Island Restaurant. Looks like a fantastic restaurant to eat Zanzibari food in Muscat Al Reef. Traditional Omani food offer. Traditional Omani food fishes grilled. Fresh seafood grilled. Omani style. Here's a blog post about it also. This post from Eater about Omani food restaurants in Muscat has some good information. Things to do in Muscat. There are no shortage of things to do in Muscat. And what I really like is that Muscat is so calm and peaceful when I was there. You'll never face any long lines or crowds. Here are a few of the top attractions I visited in Muscat. Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque. Regarded as the main and most important mosque in Oman, the Grand Mosque is a magnificent place to see in Muscat. The outside marble and sandstone is beautiful. And the inside, with a giant hand-woven Persian carpet and chandelier is impressive. Visiting the Grand Mosque is one of the highlights of any Muscat travel guide. Visiting information. Address, Sultan Qaboos Street, Muscat, Oman. Entrance price, free. Open hours, for non-Muslims, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Saturday to Thursday. Closed on Friday. Royal Opera House Muscat, another icon of art, culture, and architecture in Muscat is the stunningly beautiful Royal Opera House, completed in 2011. While you can purchase tickets to an opera or show if you're in Muscat at the right time, you can also just admire it from the outside, or take a quick tour so you can see inside. That's what I did. Visiting information, address, Royal Opera House, al Khajia Street, Muscat 103. Entrance price 2 Omani Riles for tour. Open hours 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. Beit al-Zabair Museum. One of the main Omani cultural museums in Muscat is the Beit al-Zabair Museum. I enjoyed the collections of firearms and Omani daggers and weapons. There's also an outdoor traditional Omani housing display, and they also host events. Visiting information. Address, Muscat 100, Oman. Entrance price 2 Omani Riles. Open hours 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. from Saturday to Thursday. Closed on Friday. Mutra Souk. The traditional Mutra Souk is an Omani bazaar in Muscat that is an important place of trade and culture. You'll find everything from clothes and spices to gold and souvenirs. You can get lost exploring the fascinating back lanes of the Mutra Souk. Visiting information. Address. Located at the Mutra Corniche. Open hours 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturday to Thursday and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Fridays. Al-Alam Royal Palace, Sultan's Palace, Oman is a sultanate monarchy, ruled by Sultan Qaboos of Oman, and Al-Alam Royal Palace is one of the official, ceremonial palaces in Muscat. You can't go inside, but there's a certain amazing feeling about just seeing it from the outside gate. Muscat Fish Market one of my favorite things to do in any city I visit is go to the market or fish market, and Muscat has a small, but interesting fish market located in Mutra. You'll see the selection of freshly caught fish of the day, ranging from tuna to barracuda to giant sailfish. Visiting information. Address. Located along the harbor in Mutra. Open hours 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. daily. I went about about 7.30 a.m. Kurram Beach, Quantib Beach. Finally in this Muscat travel guide I had to include some of Muscat's beautiful beaches. Kurram Beach is right within Muscat, and you can walk along the beach, swim, or there are beach activities. But a little drive away, and home to some high-end resorts is Quantib Beach. A beautiful series of coves of turquoise water beaches and rocky mountains. National Museum of Oman. Unfortunately when I was in Muscat. 
This museum was not yet open. It officially opened on the 30th of July 2016, but it's now one of the biggest and most educational museums in Oman. The museum is over 14,000 square meters in size and has a giant collection of over 12,500 things in its collection from around Oman and its empire. Things to do in Muscat There are no shortage of things to do in Muscat. And what I really like is that Muscat is so calm and peaceful when I was there, you'll never face any long lines or crowds.